All right, I wanted to record this video tip on working with the Shape Builder tool because it's an awesome new tool in Illustrator CS5, and you guys can see it over here. Now, it's not in any other version of Illustrator, but it's a really great feature that allows us to work around the Pathfinder operations, so we don't have to use them in, in most cases. So Pathfinder operations are like, uh, you know, adding, joining, subtracting, whatever, things like that. So if I want to make a more complex shape out here, what I can do is use this tool to literally just draw to combine or subtract shapes. Now, the mistake I always make is you got to select the objects you want to work with first. So I'll select these first, let's say. And these are just a bunch of different shapes, you guys. Come to the Shape Builder tool, click on it. Now, I also, let's say, want to combine them with these circles and this rectangle out here. So what you can do is you have the tool selected. You can hold down Control on Windows or Command on Mac and click and drag through and select what you want to work with. Once you let go, you're back on the Shape Builder tool and you're in what's called Merge Mode. Now, this is the cool part. If I come out here, I want to merge a bunch of shapes. I can just click and drag and say, yeah, let's combine these. Click and drag, combine these. There we go. Now, what you can also do is hold down the Option key on, on uh, Mac or Alt on Windows and click to subtract, which is kind of cool. If you want to merge a bunch of things together, what I can do is I can actually hold down the Shift key, click and drag, and create kind of like a little selection area. Once I let go of my mouse, you've got it. You can also do this if you hold down Option on uh, Mac and Alt on Windows, click and drag through, you can create a line that says, let's get rid of all this stuff. Okay, now, I don't really want to do that, but I'll let go there. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff we can get done, too. I want to show you this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge a couple shapes here. I'm going to click and drag through, and what happens by default, you guys, is it's actually going to merge and, and create a single shape, let's say, based on the swatch color last selected for the fill. So you can see right there. So if I were to choose another color and try and do this, it would actually combine it using another color. Now we can control that. If I come over here to the left and come to the Shape Builder tool and double click on it, you'll see that we've got a bunch of options. Now we have a gap detection, kind of like working with the uh, Live Paint Bucket tool, if you guys ever use that. And it means that if you've got a bunch of shapes and there's a little gap between them, it'll try and make it so that you can combine them even though there is a gap or work with it that way. These are the big ones right here, I think, the options. Now, consider an open fill path is closed is selected by default. And that's actually a good thing, I think. So that means that if there's, you know, part of it is not uh, closed, it's still going to have some kind of fill in it. This one I love. In merge mode, clicking stroke splits the path. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> Let me show you. Okay, I'll turn that on or select it. Click OK. So check it out. I'm, I'm in merge mode when I don't hold the key down, basically, when you see the plus. If I come out here, you're going to see that we've got a little cursor right here as soon as I come over a stroke. Now, what we can do, you guys, is we can actually split paths if there are some to split. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to back up. I'm going to undo a couple steps here. And you guys are going to see right here that I've got two shapes, actually three shapes that are sitting atop each other. Let me zoom in. So you can see right here, these aren't actually separate shapes. Now, what I want to do is just split them. So if I cover over the, cur or the, uh, the stroke here, you'll see the cursor change. I'll click and drag. If I drag in one direction, you'll see it's like, oh, okay, well, you want to split that one. So if I let go, you'll see it splits it. Same thing this way. If I click and drag, you can do the same thing. So that's what it's talking about with that selection. Now, it won't work if you have the option of the Alt key selected because it's just trying to subtract things. If I double-click back on the Shape Builder tool, this is one of my favorites. You're going to see right here, Pick Color From Color Swatches. That means, like I said, the last color fill selected is going to be the fill when you merge stuff. Now, what's really cool is we can actually say, just pick it from the artwork. So if I choose artwork, click OK. Let me zoom out a bit here so you can see this. I'm going to select this gray shape down here too. So hold down Control, hold down Command on Mac. Just select these as well. Select all the stuff. Whoops, there we go. Now, if I come out here and click and drag, it's going to do the same thing. I start right here, click and drag down. It's going to pull that gray. You can see it up there in the, in the control panel. There we go. Now let me undo. But if I click and drag from down up, see this, from a dark shape to a light shape and let go, it's going to pull it from the artwork. So it pulls it from the first shape you start drawing from or dragging from. That's actually kind of cool. It can be very useful. Now, another feature I love is this. If I come over here and I double click on the Shape Builder tool again, I can tell it to pick from color swatches, but show me a cursor swatch preview. This is one of my favorites. If I click OK. Let me show you guys this. You'll see, kind of like working with the live paint bucket, you'll see this little three cursor or three uh, swatch deal above it. If I go to the, the swatches panel, you'll see this is selected. If I use my arrow keys up, 
will cycle up and down, down will cycle down, and then to the right or left, you can cycle through or, you know, kind of switch through all these. Once you pick a color, you don't even have to merge shapes. You can just click to apply color if you want. And if I click and drag, let's say I use my right arrow here to go to the next couple colors like yellow, click and drag, it's just going to paint with that color you have selected. So that's actually pretty cool. So let me finish this up here. I'm going to hold down the shift key, and what that allows me to do is to draw a selection around things so I can merge or subtract if I want to. I can then subtract this by holding down the Alt or Option key. Subtract these as well by holding down the Alt or Option key. Kind of dragging through. There we go. And then just Alt, Option, click to deselect. There's a lot of ways to get that done. And there we go. There's our, uh, there's our wrench. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. I'm working with the Shape Builder. There's a lot of other ways to be able to do this, to approach this. You can go simpler. You can go more complex. But it's a tool that allows us to add, subtract, and even colorize things, which is I think is awesome.